Hey, what's up everyone? Um, so I just wanted to make a quick announcement, uh, something I've been wanting to say for a while now, uh, but we couldn't because it wasn't made official or whatever. Uh, but uh, my girlfriend Robin has been chosen as one of the, I think six or seven official Alpha Elite sponsored athletes, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, it's something that uh, I know she is really excited about and um, I think it's a huge opportunity um, for her and uh, I'm just super, super proud of her. And uh, basically we've been, you know, the last couple of weeks just taking shots uh, of her, um, in one case in a snowstorm. And uh, I'm not the most skilled person with photography, um, but uh, I think I managed to get a couple decent shots of her. And so that was a bit of fun. So now I'm here at the gym. I'm gonna be hitting a back workout. Uh, I've actually written a new mesocycle for myself. Uh, so it's running with the same basic setup and split as I've been doing uh, with back, chest and shoulders, legs, and arms as four separate days. And then I'll either take an optional rest or just repeat the cycle. But what I've been doing or what I've written for myself in this cycle is a little bit more of a powerlifting focus. Uh, so even though the rep ranges are still, for the most part, um, moderate to high, uh, especially speaking in powerlifting terms, um, I've upped the frequency. Uh, so I will be squatting twice a week now or twice within that four day micro cycle, I should say, and bench pressing twice within that micro cycle and also deadlifting once or twice within that cycle, depending on the week. And I'm also doing uh, quite a bit of technique specific work for the power lifts. Uh, so things like slow deadlifts, uh, deadlifts with a slow concentric, um, squats with three pauses on the uh, way down, uh, paused squats, and um, I guess I would say competition style bench press uh, since I feel as though that's the lift that needs the least amount of work in terms of technique and the deadlift I think right now is probably the one that uh, I could use the most work on uh, so I'm incorporating some variations on those lifts to address those specific issues um, within my uh, bodybuilding split that I've been uh, running with for the last couple of months. So that's the basic update for me on training. Uh, I'm gonna take you guys through this full back workout and uh, try to um, capture as much of it as I can. All right guys, see you in the gym. Hey, so I am back with a voiceover. Uh, I'm going to be taking you guys through uh, this full back workout. Um, so I kick things off here with uh, just a little bit of light cardio. I'll usually start every workout with um, five or ten minutes on the elliptical or stepper or, or bike or whatever um, just to get things uh, just get the blood the blood moving basically um, and then after that I jumped into my typical prehab routine uh, which is really just a, a bunch of dynamic stretches for the most part and just bringing uh, the joints through their uh, range of motion uh, so where I was deadlifting on this day I did the full uh, lower body prehab routine um, so I started this workout off with uh, slow concentric deadlifts, uh, which I'll admit is a bit of a strange exercise. <laughs> Usually you see powerlifters training uh, for max speed and uh, slowing down the concentric intentionally sounds like a little bit of a um, counterintuitive thing to do. Uh, but I've actually found this to be a pretty useful exercise uh, in terms of correcting bar path and really forcing the lift to happen in synchronicity. Uh, so what I mean by that is um, I think with the sumo deadlift it's important that the knees lock and then the hips lock um, just very shortly after it. Uh, but forcing the slowed concentric really um, ensures that you're paying attention to what you're doing with your body at, at each point in the pull. Um, and so while paused deadlifts have you know, a similar uh, effect or, or a similar purpose, um, this is a variation that um, I've enjoyed myself and uh, I've found to be quite a useful tool in terms of improving uh, technique on the concentric and also uh, improving grip strength. Uh, my hands were absolutely fried by the end of this, believe it or not, even though it was only 365. Uh, but mind you, I'm not used to deadlifting off the floor lately, um, and I don't really have my, my calluses built up as much as they used to be. Um, 
But yeah, this is a great exercise and it's one I'm excited to uh, keep in for the next month or so. Uh, just keep in mind, you're obviously going to have to go light. Uh, here I was going with something like 70% of uh, my estimated one rep max uh, for six sets of three. Uh, so after the slow concentric deadlifts, I moved on to lat pull-ins. Uh, this is typically an exercise that I'll do to sort of activate the lats and get them firing before I jump into my other movements. Um, so typically I would do this on a lat pull-in machine, uh, but the gym I was training at today didn't have that machine. Uh, so what I did was just set up a vertical bench in between two cables here and for me, I had to set up the cables at their highest setting, and uh, you're just going to have to play around with this. You don't want it to be so restricted that you, you get a limited range of motion, so you want the cables to be fairly high overhead uh, when you um, adduct the shoulder and sort of pull your elbows in towards your side. Uh, but that's a great lat activation exercise, so I usually start off with four or five sets of 15 to 20 reps of those. Um, and then I moved on to a row, uh, so in this case it was the chest supported T-bar row. Um, I'll typically do a Smith machine row or uh, some other form of row like a T-bar row uh, or whatever. But where I was doing the heavy deadlifts, uh, I wanted to make sure my erectors weren't taking too much of a hit and weren't going to be a limiting factor for me. Uh, so this is why I was doing the chest supported version. Um, and I ended up going up to a couple plates plus a 25, did that for eight, eight reps a little bit too easily, so I added another 10 and then banged that out for three sets of eight reps. So after the rows, it was on to lat pulldowns. Uh, so what I did here was three sets of 12 to 15 reps. Um, but what I did from set to set was alter my grip. Uh, so I started out wide um, and then as the sets went on, I narrowed my grip to more of like a in-between grip, and then for the final set, uh, I brought my grip in quite close. Um, so the closer you go, the, the greater the range of motion that you're going to get. Um, I also find you get more bicep activation, uh, so it actually becomes a little bit easier for me um, as the, the sets go on, which makes sense because uh, you're going to be a little more fatigued and you might be able to move the same weight for the same number of reps and also hit the muscle from slightly different angles, which I, I do think is important for overall and proportional development. So after the lat pulldowns, it was on to uh, these machine high rows, uh, and I did those for three sets of uh, 15 to 20, actually. And then after those, it was on to uh, cable pullovers, another three sets of 15 to 20. Um, if you have a pullover machine, uh, be thankful for that. Those are great machines. I wish that I had one, um, but it, they're very rare at gyms. So I've found uh, these to be the best substitute uh, for the machine. Um, another great lat exercise, of course. And then I finished off this workout with uh, these machine shrugs. Uh, so I went really light on these and uh, just tried to get that mind-muscle connection uh, with a slight forward lean. And I did three sets of these for 20 to 25 reps. And that was it. All right, guys, so that is it. That is going to conclude this training vlog. Um, I hope that you enjoyed the workout. And I've got my protein shake on deck. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one.